First off, I want to thank Lean Tech, specifically Jason and Spencer, for showing me better ways to use tech. It wasn't my first time learning it, but wow, what enhancements. Can't say enough good things about it. What can we do in less than 15 minutes? We can design a plan that allows us to get workflow, trade flow, and logistical flow all on a single sheet. For those of you that don't know, in German, the word tech means beat, frequency, or regularity to which something gets done. Let's check out this animated video to learn more compliments of lean tag. The tact production system is a scheduling system that maps flow through rhythm, continuity, and consistency on a time beat or tact. The system stabilizes the project so you can optimize it. It is made on one page showing all three types of flow in construction. Because it is formatted in time and space in what is called a tact the base unit of tact planning. These tacts allow you to level work and create buffers so you can absorb interruptions and variation. We create buffers by using Little's Law, which is tact wagons plus tact zones minus one multiplied by the tact time, which equals the duration. We're able to identify the right zoning to optimize your schedule and find those buffers. Without this, you're just wasting time with large batch areas. This format removes the chaos, the pushing, and the wasted resources of CPM. It holds the project to a one-process flow with leveled production. It ensures you have a reasonable overall total project duration. Trade flow is the key to this. You must have high levels of trade flow and workflow in construction. Trades flowing means work is flowing, so only a scheduling system that shows both types of flow will work for you and your company. You need over 60% workflow, over 80% trade flow, and over 20% logistical flow. This ensures we reduce excess worker counts and material inventory, which makes you more money. Tacted projects have smoother finishes. They need less manpower and materials, and they make more money. This is because the tact rhythm creates the backbone where the team can win in a balanced and fun way. Are you ready to make more money, use less manpower, stabilize procurement, and reduce the load on your team? If so, it's time for tact planning on your project. Remember, flow where you can, pull when you can't, and stop pushing. Tact time is the basis for construction scheduling. Systems like Scrum and Last Planner are pull systems that align everything else to the tact rhythm. So tact planning is a lean construction framework to enable critical flow schedules that focuses on information and work, throughput and bottlenecks, as some people call constraints, to enable flow. Why should you care? Because construction is complex. No matter if you're an architect, an engineer, any type of designer, an owner, a general contractor, trade partner, schedule and budget for the typical construction project, three out of four jobs are late, 75% are late for at least 40% of the total construction phase duration, and three out of four projects are also over budget. Over 90% of construction projects finish with 30% cost overruns. Ouch, that's the typical. It's even worse for projects that are a billion dollars or larger. Research shows that communication is key and critical. Eight out of 10 owners cite the need for better collaboration with contractors and about half of project related rework and 10% of time increases to project schedules are caused by rework. That's the current state. And also currently we have projects utilizing Scrum Last Planner system intact. We see industrial and manufacturing construction projects being completed 70% faster than CPM schedules indicate, 50% faster for residential and multifamily and 25% or more faster for commercial construction. What great news. Thank you, Pete. USL and LeanTac for sharing those metrics. This is where it is across the planet. And I know that there are even more. So feel free to pause and find your country or be the first to start it and get on the board from LeanTac if you take a typical critical path method schedule and just push it into a spreadsheet. And you'll see that what we have is a lot of stacking. So each color represents a different company. We've got areas on the left or what we typically see in CPM work break down structures and we see we've got stacking in order to make the schedule happen. Yes, the schedule says we'll finish, but it says that we're working simultaneously in five different areas. That's the typical thing we see, stacking. In pool planning, if I just
just come down a level, or last plan our system of production controls, we might organize the areas from one to five and create some trade flow here, not getting people stacked, but we see we have some opportunities where we have these gaps of waiting. If we take the tact approach, we can organize ourselves in such a way that we can do one area after another without stacking the trades or disciplines. Here you see it, nice sequential all the way to the end. And we might even introduce the concept of buffers or typically what we say in CPM language float to handle excess variation. This is an example from LeanTac. They gave a nice key example. This is a one page schedule that you can see spans about a year and a half. I've got year on the top. I've got my time. I've got my location. I've got the tag zones called out. We've got an exterior separate tag tier from the interiors. We have exterior happening and then we get enclosed and we start to really go after low risk interior construction as well as later picking up the site. Each one of these represents a tack wagon, as you saw in the video. And here you can see all the different trades we have. Very easy to see in a glance. Here we have the structure on a more traditional path, not tacted, but still visually indicated. I've got from Lean Tact a couple of manufacturing tacks. This is a one, two, three, three and a half year project on a single sheet. And then here's another manufacturing example. And it's blurred out to protect the teams, included color-coded maps on top. And we've got the main bulk of the schedule activities here, pictures, model images, and colored elevations so that people can see where we are and where we're going. Batch size absolutely matters. Three different types of work, a customer order of 10 finished goods. Each activity is going to take one single day in this example. This step takes a day per unit of work. Step two takes one day per unit of work. So there's 10 days here, 10 more days here. And step three takes one day per unit of work, 30 days before the customer gets the 10 finished goods. What does that look like in the schedule? Well, there's sequence one going for 10 days and we have sequence two days 11 through 20 for step two. And finally, they turn all that over for sequence three going from days 21 to 30. Now, if I cut that in half to a batch size of five, I'm still working one single day per item. But after five days, the team working on step one hands it over to the team working on step two. And then they'll work for five days before they hand off and the customer at the end is going to get this 33% faster for a total duration of 20 days. Let's see what that looks like. So step one starts to work for five days. They hand off five things to step two. You can see that they continue working on items six through 10, and they do another handoff five days later. But here after five, they turn over to the final team on step three, and they work for five days and then continue working an additional five days, finishing after 20 days total. That's 10 days faster or 33% faster in total. But what if we tack this? Every day we work is a single day before we hand off to the next step. 60% faster in 12 days. What does it look like? Here we've got step one, step two, step three. They're handing off after each day. I'll come back to this pink in a second. Step one team has uninterrupted flow. Day one, day two, day three, all the way to 10 days later. And they're handing off at the end of each day to the next step. So this customer receives the order 12 days later, 60% faster. Faster. Now, what happens if I don't perfectly tack this out and we have some variation or some process step change? No worry. We can make this adjustment. If I add these two days at the end here, if I cascade the two days down across every single row, at the very end, I've only increased the schedule by 13, 14, two more days. Let me zoom back so you can see that it's lining up exactly at the 14 mark. So there's day 14. That's a theoretical example. What about a real example? Here's a manufacturing construction construction project that we implement to TAC. On the left, we've got some engineering activities. We've got the time on the right. I took the critical path method schedule and put it into this Excel spreadsheet. And it took me about one day. And this is multiple buildings on a very large site. I mean, this building right here is over 1 million square feet. And I'm just showcasing one area. This is the typical critical path method schedule. I put a bar on the top just to show the total construction time in blue. Each one of these columns represents a week and it ends on October 16th before the start of commissioning for just construction activities only. And we've got foundation work. I'm only blacking out the name of the building, structural steel at grade, structural steel at the second floor. And we've got metal decking at the penthouse level. Finally, we've got the exterior siding, slab on deck on the first floor. And then we have, this is a lot of electrical and mechanical scope. You can see these two bars overlap for electrical and mechanical installation items. 
its traditional commissioning schedule here happening to the right. So the owner is going to be able to utilize this building for its purpose as early as January 15th when there's no more construction happening. Now, using the concepts of tact, like you saw in the simple example above, within 15 minutes with the trade contractors and the superintendent, could we break this 1 million square foot building into four areas? And we just call them area A, B, C, and D. And they said, yes, we can. And so by doing that and using known production rates that this was built on when the schedule was first created, we broke it up into these areas. Now you can see foundations here. Then we go into electrical, mechanical, underground. There's a little bit of it. Then we go up to grade and see, we didn't even have that here in the CPM schedule. Now we've added, that's an enhancement. We've added that in to catch that work that's going to happen with the foundations. Then we go up to the second floor metal decking. So you can see we've got the same sequence. We've only categorized it here with this simple 1 million square foot building in four areas. Once we start the foundation work, they stay on site all the way to the end. They go to work on other buildings on this very large campus. They come back to pick up the slab on metal deck and then the slab on grade is the last thing that happens based on the constraints of this engineering design requires. We've got a couple days of buffer and then we come into the siding, which is what this S represents, wrapping around the building and these following these four different areas. And remember, this is just a first pass schedule. And then we finish here and start commissioning four months faster. That's 23% faster. And this was just a first pass schedule for one building. We kept the same commissioning sequence because we didn't have anyone from the commissioning team to speak to what we could do here. One very cool thing that came out, both the mechanical and electrical trade partners said, you've leveled the work for us. So now we'll have the same crew starting and finishing the entire building. No mobilizing changes or fluctuations in crew size. We know based on experience that doing this is going to allow us to increase our quality and increase the safety for everybody. So you see, if we focused on trade flow only, we'll have these huge gaps. If we work on workflow only, like we do in a critical path method schedule, but if you combine both together, you can have trade flow and workflow. And now we also have logistical flow through the site. We know staging of materials. We know high levels of certainty when we're going to actually need things. And we also check this against procurement, which some things are going to take over one year to get on site. Manufacturing construction project, one day to decompose the critical path method schedule into this lean tag template. And then 15 minutes, we made a first pass TAC plan with the electrical and mechanical trade partners and the project superintendent for months of schedule time. If you want to dive deeper into that, I highly recommend Elevating Construction Tack Planning, where I guest contributed a chapter on Scrum. And if you want to connect with me or pick up my book, head over to thefelipe.bio.link or hit that QR code on the screen. It's time for you to get started and make things easier, better for construction.